Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today's lesson is on extinct animals. And the animal that we're going to be picking is the Javan tiger. And it's very similar to the Sumatran tiger. And this is actually a piece of artwork that's done by the artist Andy Warhol. And he did a series of endangered animals. So this is Andy Warhol's uh, Siberian tiger. And he did them in this abstract kind of coloring. So we're going to take this idea of Andy Warhol's uh, very abstract and colorful uh, images and create our own uh, tiger today. The Javan tiger, which is similar in appearance to this tiger done by Andy Warhol, is uh, native to Indonesian islands of Java. And in the 1800s, they were very common. It was considered a pest by the island natives. And so uh, their population dwindled, and by the 1950s, only about 20 tigers remained. Now, they were a pest because the tiger would, you know, hunt and kill some of their livestock and things. So they actually hunted the Javan tigers to pretty much exist extinction. So in the 1950s, there was 20 tigers, and this was due to habitat loss because the tiger uh, used to live in the jungles and the, uh, the Javan natives had to clear some of the jungle areas to, for farming. And so they lost their habitat that way. So the conservation efforts in the 40s and 50s were very were unsuccessful due to the lack of adequate land and planning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan out where everything's going to go because okay. that's real important because you're going to make mistakes, as we all know. Yeah. So I want the ear to be in this corner. I'm going to have the other ear on this side of the paper because this is going to be where my back is going. Let me show you on Andy Warhol's. So basically, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a really large head here, but I want some of these stripes for the tiger. I want his back on this side of the paper here so we can add the rest of his body and put some stripe here. So we want the ear to be in this corner. We want this ear. And look where his nose is going to be. So if this is our halfway point, that's pretty much where the eye lines are. So then we're gonna drop down. So we're gonna plan out this. So let's imagine this. If I took this section, and I'm gonna jump down two fingers, and I'm just gonna put a small line as a guideline. In this corner area here, I want my ear. So I'm gonna bring this line down slightly for the top of his head, and this is where I want the space to be for the ear. So I'm going to come up, so if, imagine my finger as the center of his ear. So if I line up my knuckle, look at this. This will give you the right size. In this space, this is the ear. So I'm going to put my finger, put a line where I want my, fing, my ear to end. So my knuckle's lined up here. There's my knuckle, I just drew on it. You can see how it's lining up with my line I already have in existence. So now I'm just going to curve this down, curve this down. So I have a kind of a slightly curved ear and I'll continue the head this way. If you make a mistake, because the kids that I'm with today, we're just using pencil, so just leave the mistake and you can erase later. That'll save you time. Now I'm going to curve this around a little bit more and I want my second ear to come in here. I'm gonna put a diagonal line. I wanna do the same thing. If you have to move your body a little bit, I'm moving my chair so I can angle my finger this way. Line up the knuckle, because you want it to be the same. Mark the end of the knuckle, and I'm gonna round this ear down and down, just to connect it. I'm gonna put a little line in the middle here. Let's add the inside of the ear while we're working on ears. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of up and back and a little bit of color on the inside here. We're gonna end up going over this with watercolors or tempera paint and then using oil pastels. See how Andy Warhol added a very painterly effect with some oil pastels? 
So don't worry if you have a little mistake off. None of this is gonna show in the end. Now let's get some placement down. I'm gonna come down and if I focus on the ears, I'm gonna just drop down diagonal on both sides and we're gonna get the eyes in. So I'm gonna just put a line where I think I want the eye and a line on this side. So come from where your ears are, drop down diagonal, diagonal. And that'll line up the eyes pretty good. I'm gonna do just a circle here and a circle here. This circle is about the size of a dime. Let's look at comparing to our fingertip. If you take your index finger, look at that. It's pretty much the size of your index finger as well. Okay? In the middle, I'm just gonna put a little, you know, a darker pupil, color in that pupil. Now I'm gonna do some detail in this eye. I'm just gonna curve down curve down on this side and I'm just going to leave this I'm not going to curve way down on this side I'm kind of just diagonally off to the side and this one's just diagonally off and I'm just going to connect these in a little bit just connect and connect I'm going to drop find the center now I'm going to drop down at least if you take the palm of your hand, see how it's all lined up to the eyeballs? I'm gonna measure down here, just put a line. That's the width of your hand. Just put a little line, put it in the middle. So if it's not in the middle, just extend it so it is centered. You want it centered between the eyes. I'm going to put in number one, and I'm going to draw a U around the number one. Now I'm going to come back and around and connect it. So now I come around and I'm connecting it. This is the nose shape, part of the nose shape. From here, I'm going to connect up and connect up. The next details, I'm gonna bring a line up. So I've curved around and I'm tapering it in slightly. Tapering it in slightly, coming up. And here they, it goes right into skipping a space. I'm gonna kinda of just do some jagged, jagged lines for part of a stripe. So I'm gonna add con continuation up in here for this. So I'm just gonna come up and just kind of give a free form shape here. So that'll be part of our stripe color. Once you add the stripes, it really gives that tiger feel. From here, very short line, real small line down here. It's just very small. Now I'm gonna come from that line, swoop down, swoop down. You wanna line it up. I'm lining it up to the eyes, see? Come down. So this one needs to be a little bit longer. The pupil drop down, the pupil drop down. This area, is the area we could do a few little designs for where the whiskers the padding around his mouth and then his whiskers come out here so for whiskers i'm going to just do about five lines and we'll end up redoing these with oil pastel in the very end but it's just so you know where they're going they're just coming in here and when i do whiskers i do kind of a i fling it up down and just a few little ones in the middle put a little one down there so about five don't overdo uh, we will do an odd number of whiskers now we're gonna do the chin and it's gonna come up if you notice here it's 
a little bit, it's about a finger and a half from the bottom here. So I'm just gonna put a little chin in and kind of just do a little bit of kind of line here coming up. Just kind of a wiggly line because it's fur and draw it up. Now this is just fur texture coming out in here. It's not drawn with a straight line. So we could do it kind of just a jagged, just a jagged line coming down to connect. And then some more of the fur texture in here. If we do just lines coming out, this kind of just shows some fur texture. Kind of gives a feel of almost a lion. This is just part of his head here. So I'm gonna do like a free, hand, free form line. See how I kind of just connect these lines? Free form to the bottom. So I know this is the, kind of the side of his head. And let's do some free form line up at the top here just for texture. And now we're gonna work on his uh, side coming down here. This is the part that, so I'm sliding this over so you can see it a little bit better. His back area. So I'm coming from the middle of this ear and I'm just gonna go slant downward. And this is where we'll do some of these tiger stripes. So for the tiger stripes, I'm gonna come off of the back just curving down and in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back with a kind of a point and curving. So it tapers from wide to thin. And I'm gonna do a shorter one here. So curve it off the back, shorter. And you can do it like free form. It's kind of prettier if it's a more free form shape. Now we're gonna do some tiger stripes up in here. So I'm gonna come from the right next to the eye, kind of a free form line. It's not a straight line. And then I'm coming back, keep it pointy at the end. See how I free form the shape and bring it to a point. You can put some stripes down around his eye too. Come in, curve line. This is what's gonna give it that characteristic tiger feel. And then you can even break up. Sometimes the, the tiger stripes will be like, see this shape here? It kind of has this curving line here, but then tapers to nothing. And if you do one on one side, it's kind of nice to do the same or similar on the other. So I'm gonna mimic this same shape. It tapers and tapers. See how each edge is pointed? And then I just kind of do the free form. I want some more stripes coming down in here. So I'm gonna mimic something similar to this. We can turn some of these lines into the stripe See how I just formed the stripe out of that? And some more stripes down in here. Now I can just imagine when you start coloring this in, you can be really imaginative as you do the stripes. I mean, Andy Warhol didn't use, well he used some realistic colors, but not a lot. But if you look closely, we've got even purples in here greens so you can get extremely imaginative with your stripes and patterns I have a, a student example here when we did zebras let me show you a, how they got imaginative so for the, for the coloring of this you're gonna it's gonna be up to you how you want to finish it but let me show you here on this zebra bring it up real close even in the stripes they added lots of pattern and design. So it's not realistic. So that's something to think about. As an artist, you can even add 
interesting shapes to your stripes of it. Let me slide over here and do this one. I mean, if you want to add swirls on the ends, that's up to you. I'm going to add one more stripe because this is a big negative space here. Maybe two more. Look at how I'm getting creative in my stripes. Now the stripes on a tiger are actually kind of like fingerprints on a human. How everybody's fingerprints are different. The stripes on a tiger are the identifying factors on the, the tigers. Every tiger doesn't have the same stripes or the same patterns or same designs of stripes. So each tiger has these individual pattern. So where you think you need some more pattern, add some more pattern of stripes. So this is what makes my tiger unique. And I'm even blending in some pattern that's on these lines here as well. The nose line I've added some pattern to. So now we have our sketch of the tiger. And we can add paint to this. And then the last thing we'll do is add um, the oil pastel to bring back some of these lines. Or we can even do this with a fine line paintbrush. We can add fine line to the top to bring out the pattern detail. Now I'm gonna show you some of my third graders who drew this today with me and we'll see how they did. Here are some examples of my seven and eight year old kids that just did this and they did a phenomenal job with this. So if we look, and we did manila paper and I had them start out with pencil, but uh, they did great. And this student even added, depending on the size scale, they were a little off on the head, but they had room to add a little bit of tail peeking through here, which was really great. I love that idea. And we've got some creative designs in the face here, but I really am very excited about how they came out. and can't wait to see them once we add some tempera paint and oil pastels to them, but they did an excellent job. Okay. What I did for my tiger is I, I decided on some colors and I picked three colors. It's gonna be this light pink, then it's gonna be a deeper magenta, almost purple for the stripes and lime green for the background. So choose three colors that you would like for your uh, picture. Then what I'm gonna do after I finish painting all the base coat, so the first thing is to give the tiger's skin a base coat. Now I'm just going quickly over a lot of this because it doesn't matter because I'm layering color on top. So it doesn't matter if I don't make it perfect. See here? So I don't have to stay exactly in the lines. I am being a little bit careful on the outer edges, however, though. I do want that to be a little bit uh, neater. And then also around my eyes. But you can see here I'm not perfect either. But we're going to be coming back with some oil pastel or other tempera with a finer line brush on top later. I want this to be kind of uh, painterly. I'm gonna do, this is my main value. Here is this pink. It's a medium value pink. And I'm gonna be doing some tints and shades of it throughout the tiger to give some more definition. But the first, my first job right now is to just give it a quick base coat of the main color, which is this pink. Once I'm done that, I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing next. Once I've done the base coat, now I'm just adding a little bit of lighter value here. Just adding white and blending it in. So I have a little bit of a lighter pink area. And I want to lighten up the nose as well here, the bridge of this nose. Just by putting a little bit of white on top and blending that in. So now that forms a tint of a color when we add white on top. And I'm just dipping into the, right here, the tempera cake the white, and I want a little bit of lighter area up in here too. This is like the, the, the tips of the fur coming out. And I want to lighten up on this side of the face as well. Just putting in a little bit of white on that side. So that's gonna help. And then I'll work up some shades by taking a little bit of a magenta 
and under the chin, let me move it down so you can see. I'll move it up so you can see. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a darker value pink, magenta, here, and blending that out. That's a shade. That way the chin looks like it's coming out. So it's still in that pinky purple family, this magenta color here. And just kind of blending it in loosely. I want to keep it pretty loose. And if you take just pure water, that helps blend your edges. I do want to bring this down a little bit too. So I want the nose to come out. So I'm going to put darker right in this area. And then I'm going to blend it in with just water on my edges. So when it dries, it'll be nice. You won't be able to see these, these lines in here. There. That way the nose sticks out a little bit more and the chin sticks out more too. To give a little bit of depth, I'm going to put some more depth in this area too, bringing the head. It just kind of separates body parts. So this is a shade of the color by using darker values like the ears in front, and this is the, the body. So by using darker values, it's creating shades, and white is adding tints to the color. And then I'm gonna just blend this in a little bit here, like so, just with water. That was blended with a clean brush and water. Now, the next step is working up my tiger stripes. I've worked up a lot of the stripes, so I'm going to show you how I do that. I take my, uh, to mix colors, I take my temper cake, and I'm using just this extra little styrofoam tray here, and I put some of the colors from the temper cake in my styrofoam tray. That way I can work up both of those colors. I wanted a magenta and a little bit of a darker purple, so I kind of put both on my brush, load up. And then I'm just very carefully going over my stripes. And I want it to be a little bit of one color, the magenta going into that dark purple. So I want to create a little bit of a tonal difference in the stripe so it's not so flat. And if you notice, the actual pink is drying quite light. This is the color of it originally. And so this one tends to dry a lot lighter. So I'm mixing my colors in and I'm just very carefully painting in my stripe. And of course, if I go out of line, don't worry about it because I am gonna have some very loose painterly line with oil pastel around my edges. And right now I'm thinking up some of the colors I wanna do. I wanna create some contrasting colors like Andy Warhol did with his oil pastel. And I'm not exactly sure what medium he used, but we're gonna be using some oil pastel or even just a fine line brush to add that detail. But let me show you how, what he did. Some of that very sketchy line. It's this contrasting line I'm talking about to bring up some of the detail. So we're gonna finish it off like that, but that's up to you if you wanna finish it this way or not. But I'm gonna go ahead and work up the rest of my dark values and then I'm going to show you and I'll do my background as well and then I'll show you what it looks like from there. Now that the background was done I did it with some uh, yellow layer first and then I did some darker value green on top to make it a yellow green color and I finished all the stripes and then I added the green from the background into his eyes just so that they kind of glow with that bright green. And now I'm gonna show you how I'm working up some of this oil pastel detail. For the background, I'm just taking some of the darker value green, and I kinda of just did like curving shapes for out, outlining like bushes. And then I added a little bit of just kind of swirly color, just the side, kinda of like this. You can rub it in with your finger if you want or just leave it. I don't really tend to rub too much with my finger. I usually use a lighter value to rub in with. So if you take the same value as your background, and just kind of hit over it. This will just bring up some detail of the background. I don't want to color a lot over this. And I'll show you how I finished it over here. So that's how I'm doing my background. For the 
tiger for his skin. I, I want to bring, for the fur, I want to bring some lines in here to show some texture uh, that he's has some thick kind of, you know, longer hair. So I'm working up some values that are similar and just very loosely doing some of this texture lines. And then going back just to show this is thicker fur here. Same thing on the top. Just very loosely adding these lines in like Andy Warhol worked up. I want to bring, kind of trace over my original uh, lines over in here, my black lines on the edge. And then bring back even some more white right on top. So just very loosely and quickly adding these lines. Now all of these additional lines are optional. Some kids like it to be uh, more uh, perfect and more orderly. Uh, but if you like it the looser, painterly way, you can go ahead and add these kind of lines in. Just kind of doing it all different curves. Never real straight and pointy. So you don't want it to be just straight like that. That's very artificial. So just I kind of curve it left, curve it right, curve it up, down. In the way that the fur would grow. I don't want too much underneath him. I want it to be more of a shadow underneath him. So I'll go with some darker value. And I'm just kind of tracing some of these major black lines that I have right in here. And then I'm gonna bring back some of this furry lines, very loose again. And I can even put some more fur lines in on the inside of the ear. Again, just working it up pretty loose. I'm just being careful on some of this, tracing some of these. I'm not gonna trace the whole thing. I'm tracing maybe the bottom part of it on these lines. I wanna bring back texture in here. And he has actually a few more rows of them. So I'll put some more of those in with some darker value oil pastel that matches my purpley pink family. And then I want the whiskers coming out. I may do, I'm gonna try and see what the white whisker looks like. And I may bring in some gray. So I'm bringing back the whisker here and then I may do a gray on top, like that. Let's see if I like the gray. And I'm gonna do the same for the mouth area too. I'm, I'm choosing to do darker value here for the mouth. And so that's how I'm gonna work up my painterly kind of freeform lines here for fur. Now I don't want the darker value now, I'm just bringing it in here on the edges, very small, because you would see the fur coming out would be lighter, but then at the roots of the fur, it would be a little bit darker. So my darker lines are smaller. If you notice here, I'm just doing a little line and then bringing it in a little bit smaller in between. Just lightly pulling down in here, like so. So I'm gonna work this up, just very loose and painterly like this, and I'll show you the final product. And here it is with the oil pastel all worked up. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see closer. And I like the very loose accents to it, actually. And it does help, I'll show you how I did my eyes. It did, does help if your eyes aren't perfectly the same on both sides. Uh, to, to just blend it together to make it look like it's similar size because I added one side to the very left. I made it a little bit bigger because that was smaller. So it does help with some imperfections. And I love the way it came out. I, I love the two colors together. The purpley magenta and lime greens are some of my favorite color combinations. And so if you choose colors you love, you're gonna be happy with your picture. But I hope you enjoy the lesson. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already.